Welcome to the Arlington Street Church podcast. Founded in 1729, Arlington Street continues today as a gathering place for progressive people of faith in the greater Boston area and beyond. We are located at the corner of Arlington and Boylston Streets, across from the Public Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Please visit ASCBoston.org for more information about this historic Unitarian Universalist congregation. Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace. I used to know a high school teacher, Penny, who would ask herself, her, she would ask her students, what do you want to be if you ever grow up? And then she would pause and she would look meaningfully around the room and she would say, I still haven't figured it out. An indication that she was also asking herself as well as her students. She was about 40 years old and Penny had taught chemistry and physics at the high school for several years. She had a side job at a lab downtown. She had a husband who loved her dearly and she loved him and they had kids. Her life seemed pretty complete, but when she asked her students and herself, what do you want to be if you ever grow up? She admitted to them that she too was still searching. Penny didn't seem to mean that she was dis dissatisfied, just that she was still open to learning, still up open to growing, and to whatever might come next. And that, my friends, is a good thing. As Unitarian Universalists, we affirm that we are all on a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. Our search is lifelong, and it changes direction from time to time. Our intention to continue to grow as we age is one of our collective spiritual commitments. But how will we know what we want to be if we ever grow up? How will we know when we hit upon a new truth or a new piece of meaning in this search that we're on? Howard Thurman suggests that there is a deep part of us that can recognize that which is most real. He says, there is something inside every one of you that waits and listens for the sound of the genuine in yourself. It is the only true guide you will ever have. So his advice, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive because what the world needs is people who have come alive. I invite us to explore today this call of the genuine. How do we heed that inner knowing and live vibrantly for ourselves and one another? I want to say at the outset that what makes you come alive may or may not be vocational. That is, we may or may not have a job that excites us. For many people, work is something that feels genuine. And for many others, work is just work. Or some of us may be out of work, or unable to work, or retired. And that's life. The call of the genuine doesn't often, often doesn't lead to a career. You can find it in hobbies. You can find it in your commitment to an important cause, whether your service is paid or unpaid. You can find it in family, friends, and community. What makes you come alive can come from and then lead to any number of places. What it will lead to is more of a sense of who you are being shared with the world. And that sharing of oneself with the world leads also to relationship, 
to recognizing our need for healing ourselves, one another, and the world, and for working together on the path of justice. So we find the sound of the genuine in ourselves, but in any number of ways, and we perceive it, too, in any number of ways. Howard Thurman talks about hearing. He says it's the sound of the genuine. And we just saying of, do you hear? And David Blanchard in our reading talked about these people he met in East Africa who talked about each of us having our own song. But some of us are more connected to other senses. You may find that you look for the call of the genuine, something that seems to shine in your life. Or maybe for you, the genuine is a felt sense. Recognition may come when you feel yourself connect to the ground through your feet in a deeper way. Or it may come when your heart soars or when there's a pit of nervous excitement in your stomach or maybe all of the above. Regardless of how you perceive the call of the genuine, you will know it by that feeling of aliveness. A few years ago, the call of the genuine led me to consider ordained ministry. When I heard it, I was right here at Arlington Street Church. I'd been part of this community for several years already, first in the young adult group and then with, with the women's group and worship committee. And with worship committee, something changed. It wasn't leading worship. I'd done that as a youth coming up through our movement and I knew that worship was something that I loved. It actually was in the back corner of our sanctuary in the candles pew. Before worship begins, a member of the worship team is always there in the back pew to collect our cards of sorrow and joy and to sit with people to offer a friendly face and a hand to hold. When I sat in the candles pew, I would listen to you all as you shared the triumphs and heartaches of your weeks. I felt honored to be entrusted with your stories. I still feel honored to be entrusted with your stories. And I felt something more, a love that I can best describe as sacred compassion, a deep respect for your paths, empathy for your losses and struggles, and hope for your living. And over time, as I continued to sit in the candles pew with you all, I recognized that that sense of sacred compassion was bigger than I had realized. This type of listening made me come alive, and that was the call of the genuine. Maybe you can recall moments in your life where something rang true this way for you. How did the genuine call out to you? Can you remember that feeling of aliveness that ignited your soul? If you've got that feeling, hold on to it. Our sense of aliveness, the call of the genuine, is something that is essential to who we are. Sometimes we recognize it like a thread that runs through our lives. We might not have known it at the time, but if we look back, maybe we can recognize it. Hindsight can help. And by the same token, we might recognize the call of the genuine if we let ourselves dream into the future. Our desires and our prayers can help us uh, discover what is most true for us and what makes us come alive. I invite you to pause with me and look back and look forward and ask some big questions. The call of the genuine echoes the song that we sang this morning. Where do we come from? What are we? 
And where are we going? Looking back through my life, I can see the stepping stones on the path to ministry from my childhood onwards. I was a teen who loved church. I loved talking about spirituality and I wanted to explore ways to do worship together, but I also really loved listening to other people's stories, whether we were in church or not. In high school, I thought that I might want to be a religion major in college. And then I took a course in American Sign Language and fell in love with deaf culture, bilingualism, and the challenge of interpreting. And so I spent the next 15 years immersed in that world, having a first career as an American Sign Language interpreter. Some people might see this as a detour, but interpreting has always made me come alive. Interpreting and ministry both ring true with the sound of the genuine for me. And for any of us, different places might call to us at different points in our life. It's about that weaving and that continued journey. Because the free and responsible search for truth and meaning grows as we grow. The hope isn't that we'll find that one thing that will just save us forever, but rather that we can use all of what has happened in our past when we come to find out what the next thing is. So when you look back at where you've come from, perhaps remembering that feeling of the genuine that you thought of a few minutes ago, but when you look back at your life, what threads run through it that feel like they're essential to who you are? How do those threads make you come alive? Do any of them call to you for more attention? We can look back to discern the call of the genuine, and we can also look ahead, exploring our plans and our dreams and our hopes to see where we want to go next. Where I had been included a constant love of church and a passion for building community and a love of listening to others' stories. And where I found myself in the candles pew was recognizing that that was a call of the genuine. But where it led me was to dream about becoming a hospital chaplain. It led me to seminary at Andover Newton Theological School and to serving as a ministerial intern at the UU Church of Reading. And at Reading, I have felt my ministry really coming alive. I have loved leading worship, getting to know congregants, and listening to their stories, hearing their triumphs and their heartaches and being with them as I have been with you in the Candles Pew. And I love supporting lay leaders in their ministries. The thread of the genuine continues and I'm still dreaming. Where do I want to complete my hospital internships? What type of hospital do I want to be a chaplain in? I also let myself dream big and I hope you all let yourselves dream big from time to time too. It helps to dream big, even if it's super unrealistic from time to time, because those big hopes can catch something in us that we might recognize as the call of the genuine. So for me, for example, what might my ministry look like if a church and a hospital were not totally separate places but we could recognize that healing of body and healing of spirit are one and the same, or at least that they could be. So those are my big questions, and I wonder, what about you? If you let yourself daydream, what wishes would you have for your life? 
what vision makes you come alive? And where might the call of the genuine lead you? Howard Thurman says, there's something in every one of you that waits and listens for the sound of the genuine in yourself. Ask what makes you come alive and then go do it because we need more people who have come alive. So we might recognize the call of the genuine by that sense of aliveness. We might recognize it as a thread that runs through our lives and shines with what is most essential. If we get stuck, we can look back and ask, where do we come from? We can pause and say, what are we? Where are we? And we can dream and dream big and ask, where are we going? We can ask these questions on our own and it might be more helpful sometimes to ask them in community, to ask them together or of one another. All along my own journey, I've been grateful to come back to Arlington Street. I'm grateful for this spiritual community and all of the support that you have given me as I have answered my call. My hope for you is that you will pay attention to the call of the genuine in your own life. Welcome that sense of aliveness and nourish it wherever you can. Use it for the betterment of your own life, for the betterment of our world. And as a congregation, I hope that you will continue to support one another on your journeys. Whether you're a longtime member here or here for your first time, I hope that you will be able to have some connection with others that will help you and help them so that we might build beloved community that spills beyond these doors. Help each other to look back and look forward and dream together and I will be along for that journey. May you continue to seek out what makes you come alive and may gratitude be yours when you find it. May you answer the call of the genuine to become fully yourself. Amen and blessed be. Thank you for listening to this week's podcast. We would love to hear from you via email at office at ASCBoston.org or through our Facebook page. If you would like to support the good work of Arlington Street Church, please consider a contribution by checking the mail or through our website, ASCBoston.org.